Hello and welcome to the section 6 of the course Database Hacking. So now in this section we are going to take a look at various points. First of all we are going to learn about SQLite tool inside Kali Linux. Then we are going to perform SQL injection attack using SQL map tool, JSQL and SQL sys. So let's start with using SQLite tool. In this video we are going to take a look at couple of points. First of all what is SQLite tool and how we can gather information about database using SQLite. So you need to open Kali Linux inside VMware Workstation and then I'm going to show you that how you can use SQLite tool inside it. So I'm here at Kali Linux operating system. So what we are going to do here, we are going to learn more about databases, right? We want to learn about the structure of databases that how to create a database, how to create a table, how to create columns, how to insert data inside it. So that we are going to learn using SQLite tool, right? So where you can find it, it's pretty easy. If you click on applications and uh, if you select database assessment, then you can find out SQLite database right here, right? So this is SQLite database. Now you can click here and open it inside Kali Linux operating system. So this is graphical user interface of uh, SQLite tool. So this is just for learning about databases that how to create a database structure inside it. So let me show you that how you can create a new database inside backend, right? So you can click on new database here, right? And you can provide any name, doesn't matter. For example, I can type name is database, right? You can type this name and click save. So you can see here that uh, database has been created. And now we need to provide the table name here so that uh, which table name we need to use so you can type the table name is like table number one right inside table name you need to provide column names so you can see here that add field is available here using this add field you can provide column names here right so uh, you can click on add field and uh, here you can provide the column name right so I'm taking a, a simple example for example you can type here your subject right subject name so subject can't be integer obviously it will be a text so you can click on text here again you can create a new field here and uh, you can type here subject id subject underscore id right and obviously id will be an integer word. so subject is test and subject id is integer and this is inside table number one so now you can click ok and uh, here you can see table number one has been created if you expand it then you can see there are two columns available one is subject and second is subject underscore id where subject is text and subject underscore id is integer right similarly we can create one more table so you can again click on create table and uh, here you can provide the table name so again table name is table 2 right and uh, you can add fields here so you can click on add field so for example this is for student so you can type here student underscore name and student name will be text right similarly you can add uh, student underscore roll number and uh, it will be an integer so select integer and click ok so you can see here there are two tables available here one is subject, one is basically one is table one, one second is table two. Inside table one, these columns are available subject, subject ID, in table two, student name and student roll number. So that's how databases are created. So let me explain you what we have done. So first of all, we have created a database name, right? The name of the database is database. Inside that database, we have created two table names. One is table one, second is table two. Inside table one, we have created two columns one is subject second is subject underscore id and inside table 2 we have created two columns again student underscore name and student underscore roll number so we have created database tables and columns now the next thing is how do you enter the data inside these columns so to enter data inside these columns you can click on browse data and you can see here there are two tables but in table 1 
nothing is there and in table 2 it is also empty now we need to feed the data inside it so first of all do one thing select table 1 right click on new record and here you can type anything for example subject subject is uh, for example physics right the id is 1 similarly you can add more record if you click here click new record here you can type any other for example maths you need to type here right the id is 2 and one more record for example chemistry this third one and the record is 3 right so that's how you can feed data inside tables so this is table 1 inside there are two columns subject and subject id inside subject column there are three entries physics maths and chemistry and inside subject underscore id it is the id of the subjects number 1 number 2 and number 3 similarly you can select table number 2 in which student underscore name and student under underscore roll number is there so click on new record so here you need to type the name of the student right for example name is sam the student roll number is one similarly you can create new record click here here you can type peter student roll number is two right and click on new record here you can type john and student roll number is 3. So we have added 3 entries inside table 1 and 3 entries in table 2. Right. So we have we have created database, tables, columns, and we have entered the data also. So our database is complete. Now, how web applications work, how they extract the data from database, or how attacker can extract data from database, that we are going to learn here. So you can click on execute SQL where you can type commands here and you can gather information about uh, tables. So for example, if we have information about table names, so there are two tables, table one, table two. Now I need to gather the data inside it, right? I have no idea what is data inside table number one. I want to gather data using SQL commands. So how to use SQL commands here? So you can type here, select star star means select you are selecting star means everything star means whatever inside the table show me select star from space which table name so first of all i'm providing information about table number one so you can type here table one right so i'm selecting data and semicolon so select star from table one i'm selecting everything from table one this is an SQL command. Now it will go inside database, select everything from table one and show me right here. So you can click here. This is how to run. Click. And here you can see that we got the result here. So three rows return. Select star from table one command. So you can see here that we got the whole table one right here inside the result. This is a, there, there were two columns, subject and subject ID. One, two, three, physics, maths and chemistry, right? So that's how you can gather information about the tables. Similarly, you can gather information about a single column also. For example, I don't want the two columns here. I want single column. For example, I only want subject column here. So what you can do here, you can remove star here and you can type here. I want only subject column from table one. Now you can run here. You can see here that subject underscore ID has been removed and we only got the subject column. Similarly, if you don't want subject, if you want subject underscore ID, so you can just edit it. You can type that column name subject underscore ID, click here, and here you can see that subject name was removed and subject underscore ID showing me right here. Got it? This is about table one. Similarly, you can select more information about table two if you type select star from table two. Now we are talking about table number two, right? And now you can click run here and you can see here that student underscore name and student underscore role is available here. Similarly, you can select student underscore name if you only want student underscore name column. So this is student underscore name, right? From table number two, run it. Here you can see. And if you want student underscore ID, 
so you can type student underscore id from table number two and you can run here basically student underscore id is not available right so let me go back to structure student underscore role number is there so you can type here student underscore role and here you can see student number role. so if there is no column about student underscore id so it will give us an error message and if and we have edited the query we have typed the right column and we got the result here right so that's how database works database has a kind of hierarchy first database name then table names then column names and then data right that's how attacker enter inside database and gather information from first of all attacker finds out information about database then information about tables using table information they get columns and then after the data like we did using select command right so that's how the databases works inside backend and uh, how to attack on the database and how to gather information that we are go going to learn from the next video so in the next video we are going to learn about sql map tool and using sql map tool we are going to perform database penetration so thank you so much for your time